Hi everyone, today I'd like to talk about something a little different. I'd like to talk about the idea that we tell stories with our images that we create. And it's the processing decisions that we make along the way that ultimately determine how compelling those stories are. This is kind of a philosophical idea that I talked about in some detail in the January 2021 issue of uh, Sky and Telescope magazine. It's an interesting idea and it's one that's actually kind of, you could talk about it, but it's hard to show unless you do kind of the following thing. You take a data set, you process it, and then you end up with a result. And then you take that same data set and you make completely different decisions or different decisions that end up with a different result that really does tell a different story. So it's guided only by the decisions, not by the constraints or the difficulties of you know, processing the data itself. The data didn't drive the story. It's really the decisions that you made as a processor which do that bit. Uh, and uh, I, of course, demonstrate these processing sessions as part of my instructional videos at atomblockstudios.com. I processed this image of uh, NGC 3486 back in 2018. And then I decided that I would reprocess it today, the same data set, but now using the updated um, elements of PixInsight, as well as this uh, golden opportunity to show what these processing decisions look like when you do it differently and you end up telling a very different story in terms of the result. So that is what I'd like to uh, demonstrate here. I'll begin by showing you with what you've already seen kind of floating around in the image, which is the newer version of this result uh, for NGC 3486. And then we can compare to what I did back in 2018. So let me begin by telling you a little bit about this beautiful multiple spiral armed galaxy. I think one of the interesting stories about this galaxy is that it isn't very far away. And I wouldn't even need to look up anything on the internet to know that. If you look very closely at kind of the zoomed in version of this data and this final result, you can easily see that there is partially resolved stuff in the galaxy. You can see some bumpy stuff here in the bluish star forming regions. You can even tell there's a little bit of structure to the nebulae, the H2 regions of this galaxy. All of that signals that this galaxy is not very far away. Now I tell you that's true, but we should really verify that really is true. So if you go on the internet, there are some wonderful resources like this one. This is called the NASA Extra Galactic Database. And what you can do is type into here any particular galaxy you'd like, like NGC 3486, and it will return metadata about the galaxy. One of the interesting things that uh, it will tell us is the recessional velocity of the galaxy and from which we can infer the distance to this galaxy. All we need to do is take that number and divide it by Hubble's constant, uh, the value that describes this expansion rate of the universe, um, and that will tell us the distance basically in megaparsecs, and then we multiply times 3.26, and we'll get millions of light years away. So let's see, is this galaxy really that close to us? Get out the calculator here and do the math. We take 678 divided by, uh, what is it? Uh, okay, so I have to pick a Hubble constant. 72 is a reasonable Hubble constant, I guess. And then multiply times 3.26. That looks like about 30. Yep. So this galaxy is around 30 million light years away. And that's not really that far. Um, the center of the Virgo cluster, for example, is around 40 million light years away. And when we look at galaxies that are actually really far away, all of this smooth structure, all this structure rather becomes very smooth, kind of averaged out. You just don't see all of these small details. In fact, let me just show you how uh, good this data is in the sense that it's great that the galaxy is closest to us, but unless also the atmosphere allows you to see the small details, uh, if the seeing is very poor, then all of this structure and coolness about the, the galaxy gets kind of blurred away. Uh, but in this particular case, the data is actually quite nice. Here is the luminance data for this galaxy. And as a very quick tangent, I'd like to show you something in PixInsight. There is a tool which will kind of give us the average uh, star in this image. It'll model the average star, which is used in general in the process of deconvolution, which I did do in this project. 
uh, but it's also just a nice tool to give us what the resolution here is of the data. So if you go under script and render, there is, if you subscribe to the repository for Hartmut Bornemann's uh, scripts, which are great scripts, includes the game script and many other popular ones. This is one here. It's called the PSF image. And the way it works is you just uh, tell it the, the brightnesses of stars in the image that are, you want to analyze. You don't want to look at stars that are saturated or that are too faint. So for example, I might raise this to 0.1 and saturation is certainly less than 0.7, but I'll do 0.65 just for fun. And then you uh, analyze the entire image it will return a model of the average PSF of the image and we'll be able to see the resolution, but then you can actually create or export this synthetic PSF for deconvolution purposes. So you hit evaluate here and uh, the first thing it'll tell us at the bottom is how many stars that did it find in the image. It found 113, not very many stars at all. This is not a very starry field. And there's only going to be a small subset of stars of those 113 that meet this criteria here of being between these brightness levels. And from this, we'll be able to, you know, see the resolution. So let's give it a second to complete. There we go. So this is the model that was developed. And if I hit the create button, it'll output this uh, small PSF that you could use. But what interests me here are the full with half max values. So this is telling us the size and pixels of this point spread function. And let's call it four pixels. Well, the plate scale for this data is 0.33 arc seconds per pixel. That means, and what we're looking at here is the combination of many frames all together, averaged together, that the resolution in this final result is 1.2 arc seconds. What is really cool is that some of the frames that went into this average are sub arc second. They're really, really good data. So that then to me really needs to be part of the story of what I want to tell. There's a, there's a challenge in that though. The challenge is when you, uh, I'm gonna exit here. When you look at this image, that bumpiness of the galaxy, it's so easy to either one, process it based on your decisions and wipe it all away, make it all smooth and kind of ugly. The other direction is also equally maybe not as good, which is that you increase the contrast so much that the result is too harsh. Yes, you can see those details, but those details become too overwhelming as if, you know, when you have a starry field and the stars seem to detract from the rest of the field. That can happen even in a galaxy, if you can believe that. So let me show you what this is about I processed this data set back in 2018 and then redid it with the latest and greatest updates of PixInsight and some of the new techniques that, I, uh, that I've uh, been working with. And that has allowed me to demonstrate something that I don't usually get to do. I talk about the story thing and I talk about the decisions, but when you actually take the same data and you, in, with intent, process it with different, um, with different choices to give you two different results, that is truly instructive. And uh, that's what I had the opportunity to do here. Let me just point out that this is all material that I do as part of my instructional videos. And you can see that it's, um, it's non-trivial. <laughs> they, I, I show every single thing that I do and you can see all of the various steps here to produce this final image. And uh, what I'm saying is I did it back in 2018. Here's all the steps I did back then. And they're different when you look in detail at some of these steps. They are different than what I did today. So let me show you what those differences look like. Here is the final result that I got today. And let's be sure that I've got the other one behind it. Not this one. Let's get this out of the way. But I should have the older version right there. So if I blink the two versions, I think, oh, let me get this out of the way here. I think you can plainly see the difference between the two and I bet you that's gonna do that. Yep, hang on, I need to click here and then realign these two. There we go. So blinking back and forth, the new version, maybe to your eye looks, it certainly doesn't have as much contrast, it looks maybe a little bit softer with a little more glow to it. 
And all of the decisions that I made kind of led up to this final result. But at the end of the day, I actually kind of think that this is the more natural view. This image, I actually received some comments and the people thought it was a little too harsh. It's a little too much and I agree. I do think that there are elements. It's not a complete thing, but there are elements of the old version that I liked. It's not that, uh, you know, uh, that I was a bad processor three years ago. I, I was certainly doing good things. But at the end of the day, some of the decisions, I think, weren't as good as some of the ones I made today. Now, you might still like the old version over the new version. It kind of depends on your taste. But the real point here is that I chose two different paths and they truly led to different results. And, and it's really powerful to be able to demonstrate that um, as part of these instructional videos. On another note, let me just say that you know, when you're processing images, it's not always that you're going to get the best optimal result every time you make an image, right? I certainly don't. Uh, there are many, many times where I really, I either miss the landing, I certainly don't stick the landing, and I think this is an excellent example of that. If you really compare the two images, and this is really a challenging data set, uh, I do think that, you know, that result is, it's a little bit too harsh. It's just a little bit too much. I didn't stick the landing. Now, one of the funny things about it is that I think I have a, I have a problem with this kind of galaxy. Uh, let me show you an example of another one that I did long ago that I've never been happy with and maybe someday I'll, I'll do again. But this is the same kind of problem where we have this galaxy that's just not that far away. And uh, I think the contrast needs to be managed a little better. Now, in my, in my defense, this is an image that I did you know, in 2009. And it's not a very deep data set or anything like that. So anyway, the point is that I recognize within my own choices that some of the processing that I do, especially with a, a case like this, you know, it can need to be more nuanced. It needs to be very thoughtful in the way that you go. And I'm demonstrating here that you really can get two very different kinds of answers. Let me point out one more thing about PixInsight that I think was important to this different result, a different decision that I made, but it's just an element that is a part of processing in both cases, which is the production of um, LRGB. There is a stage where you are going to combine your luminance image, which I showed, with the color image itself, and you put the two together. So the image that is here at the bottom is actually an intermediate image here, and what I want to show first is that if you look at the history, you can see all of the steps that I made along the way. Uh, and one of the interesting things, you'll see a lot of these PixInsight bits here. The PixInsight ones are actually some of the modified versions of the image that I did in some enhancement. And then the way that I work with images that you might consider, I don't, it works for me very well, is I like to keep a, a single legacy, if you will, of all of the adjustments that I made on an image in a single image. So oftentimes I'll make a copy or clone of this image to do some other enhancement, but then when I'm done, I copy that and overwrite the original image so that I maintain this kind of linear history of everything that I've done. Now I still have these other images saved in the project, but you can see the work that I did to get to the final result. What I'd like to show you though, is you go all the way back in time to this point, this is where I blended uh, for LRGB combination that luminance image with the color. I want to show you what the color image looked like. Here, this is the raw color image at this point, and then I performed a mask stretch uh, and then further stretch the image. So right before I did the LRGB combination, check out what the color image alone looks like. This is what it looks like. And so what I'm pointing out here is that after I made these adjustments with mass stretch and then I did a further um, histogram transformation, some other things, um, I am not matching the brightness levels at all. So this is actually a fairly low contrast image, a low contrast uh, version of the color data that I blended with the luminance to result with what is the next step here. So here is the result, and then as you step forward, you can see that I bring up the color saturation and make some of these other enhancements. But 
I don't need to do the following thing. I'm going to go back in time here. I don't need to, in some way, make a permanently stretched image that say you do an auto STF of the luminance and then you do an auto STF of the, of the uh, color data and those two things you put together or somehow linear fit them. That is only one of an infinite number of ways of blending the color with the luminance and determining the contrast of the color as well as the luminance is important. You'll notice that in that luminance, I'm gonna now show you my luminance image that I used. I think it was this one here. Let me see if I go forward, I'm going to zoom out and then do this. This should be, no, it's not. I have an enhanced luminance. <laughs> so let me look at the enhanced one. There it is. This is the luminance that I ended up with. So I had this version and I did some other things. Um, and I ended up with a version of the luminance that's quite gray. What you'll notice here is that when I uh, roll my cursor across the screen, most of the values are less than 0.8. And that's what allows me to be able to blend in a low contrast color image with this version of the image, which is quite gray, and then eventually take that resulting color image and bring it forward in terms of its color saturation and its contrast to the point that I want, where I can either end up with these very two different answers one was a very high contrast image, the other being the more up-to-date image that I kind of like today, the more natural view of the image. That's what I wanted to show you today. I wanted to show you a few things in PixInsight. I wanted to show you how these different decisions really do lead to different results, and it leads to a different kind of story that's told about the, uh, the final result that's made. Thank you very, very, uh, very much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this kind of dive into some of the things that are thought about as part of the processing at adamblockstudios.com.